By far, the most important Marvel characters of all time are the Fantastic Four. We call them the first family of comics for good reason, since without them, the Marvel Universe would literally not exist, and Stan Lee would have kept making tacky romance comics until he hit burnout and left. However, having such enormous shoes to fill have driven many writers and artists that took over from Jack Kirby and Stan Lee to make some, you might say, bold choices. And by bold, I of course mean effing terrible. With that in mind, I'm Will for What Culture, and here are 10 things Marvel wants you to forget about the Fantastic Four. 10. They've literally been to heaven. This is an interesting point that Marvel has sort of sidestepped, not because it's technically bad, but because, well, what do you do after the Fantastic Four go to heaven and literally meet God? The story, particularly the moment where they actually meet God, who has taken the form of Jack Kirby, is excellent, like the rest of Wade's run, but it's no surprise that future writers mostly ignore it. After all, I went to heaven and met God is probably something you want to keep to yourself, even if it did actually happen to you. 9. Ben once had to wear a Thing suit. There are various points throughout the years where Ben Grimm gets his original body back, but those times usually coincide with him leaving the team for various reasons. But one time he decided to stick around, and Reed didn't want him to feel left out. So after Luke Cage ran with the team for a while, Reed constructed for Ben a high-powered suit of armor that looked exactly like his original Thing form. Yeah, it's a dumb idea, but more importantly, it completely misses the point of Ben's appearance as the Thing. Ben's appearance sort of represents Reed's biggest mistake, permanently taking away his best friend's normal life because of a stupid decision. When it comes to Ben's look, it's better to keep it one way or the other. This halfway house shtick doesn't work out. 8. Marvel Girl you might know Valeria Richards as the hyper-intelligent, precocious toddler of the Richards family, but that's not all there was to the story. Originally, Sue had a miscarriage, losing her second baby, but young Franklin was unwilling to accept that the little sister he was ready to meet would never come. So, using his godlike reality-warping powers, he transported the baby that could have been to another universe. Of course, Valeria found her way to the 616 universe and joined up with the Fantastic Four she was supposed to be born into, becoming the bubblegum-popping rock star wildcard of the team Team until she decided to give herself up to have another shot at being reborn in her original universe. That's how we got the Valeria Richards we know and love today. It's not a terrible story to be fair, but it is a long and winding road just to arrive at a hyper-intelligent four-year-old. 7. Reed's Actions During Civil War now, no one comes out of Civil War looking like anything likeable, but Reed in particular screws up in two key ways. Of course, there's the fact that he built a murderous clone of Thor, who proceeded to kill Goliath in the first major conflict of Civil War, and then the fact that he built a high security prison for heroes who violate the Registration Act, sanctioned in the Negative Zone. 10 out of 10 fascist there, Reed, so fascist in fact that most comics have just straight up ignored that it ever happened. 6. Reed shot the Hulk into space. Reed Richards, despite being the most genius mind in the Marvel Universe and teamed up with the other biggest brainy boys in that universe, decided that the only solution to the Hulk was to shoot him into space after he leveled Las Vegas. Oh yeah, and he does this with a ship powered by fuel so explosive that if tampered with or sabotaged, it can reduce an entire city to a crater. But surely that won't come back to bite him, right? Yeah, so anyway, Planet Hulk happened, and at the end, the ship explodes and kills Hulk's pregnant wife. Besides World War Hulk, which saw the Hulk air his many grievances with the Marvel Illuminati, there wasn't much in the way of confrontation with the actions Reed committed. Probably because they were so grievous that the only way to keep him likeable would be just to pretend the whole thing never happened. 5. Fan Forstick It's hard to even come up with things to say about this legendary failure of a movie, as the entire internet spent the year it came out carefully dissecting it to find out exactly what went wrong. Pretty much nothing about the film works, and that's all you can really say about it. And with the acquisition of Fox, Disney now has the challenge to finally break the curse of terrible Fantastic Four movies. As time passes, the best thing that can happen to the first family of comics is getting this movie further and further out of the public consciousness. 4. The Roger Corman film was made only to retain film rights. Hardcore fans of the Fantastic Four know all about the infamous and unfinished Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie. It's one of those films that it's impossible to hate, despite everyone agreeing that it's terrible, because it has this shoestring budget charm that makes it amazing to rip on with friends. However, while the behind-the-scenes tidbit about this movie being nowhere close to being finished is common knowledge enough, what's a bit more obscure is the reason why it was so rushed and put together so slapdash. Turns out, they only made the thing to retain the movie rights to the Fantastic Four IP. 
Marvel Studios would very much prefer its loyal fan base, forget about this shady business move, to hold on to a property they weren't even doing anything with in the first place. 3. Their comic was cancelled due to a dispute with Fox Comic publishers and movie studios are basically gigantic fussy babies masquerading as corporations, so it should come as no surprise that when someone gets to play with Marvel's toys, Marvel spends years just pretending that they never liked that toy to begin with. Due to a dispute with Fox over the film rights of Fantastic Four, Marvel sent down a kill order on anything to do with the Fantastic Four. All this so Marvel wouldn't give free advertising for what they saw as a rival getting to use their stuff. 2. Their countless tacky redesigns the Fantastic Four have gone through multiple redesigns over the years. Hell, they didn't even have uniforms in the beginning. Fans had to browbeat Lee and Kirby into giving them suits. But the suits Kirby created are some of the best designs he ever crafted. Simplistic yet striking, the Fantastic Four suits are now a vital part of their identity. But that wasn't good enough for many artists, who proceeded to needlessly tweak what wasn't broken. Sometimes you'd get a good retooling of the classic suits, like during the Mark Wade run, or you had drastically different designs that worked like gangbusters. As seen with the ones in Future Foundation. And then sometimes you got Sue basically wearing a bikini, Reed putting 90s patches on his suit, and Ben wearing a stupid looking helmet for even stupider reasons. And number one, Reed's misogyny. Most writers these days like to portray Reed as the platonic ideal of the benevolent scientist and explorer, someone who goes out into the stars not to conquer, but to understand, always fascinated with every new thing that comes his way, and he loves his family more than life itself. But, well, it took us a while to get here. As the old saying goes, comedy is the fastest to age, and the fastest to age poorly. Nowadays, old school Reed just comes off like a condescending and uncomfortably sexist, misogynistic jerk. Not of the enlightened genius family man of Hickman, or the geeky but well-meaning hero of Wade, but instead a man who you really just want to kick in the balls every time he talks to Susan, like she's anything less than the best thing in his entire life. Marvel would love nothing more than for everyone to forget this era of Reed Richards, and honestly, obliging them might not be the worst idea. And before we finish, check this out. Take it away, Ewan. The Force is with us. What Culture Star Wars is our brand new channel dedicated to all things Star Wars. We'll have all the usual lists, features, and news, plus there'll be ups and downs for all the latest shows and movies, and coverage on Star Wars novels and comics. Subscribe today via whatculture.com forward slash Star Wars or search What Culture Star Wars on YouTube.